The invasion stunt was no easy feat, and local magic duo JC Sam and Magic Babe Ning decided to push the boundaries by doing away with any safety lines and net. But in any case, if the worst happens, at least Magic Babe will be caught by the spikes below. You've seen the amazing inversion stunt. Now standing beside me are the magicians who brought us the visual treat. This is JC Sam and this is of course Magic Babe Ning. So how do you feel? Uh, I'm glad that she came out unscathed. Okay, we did it. Uh, all the rehearsals. I mean, we're only doing this one time without the safety line and of course the bed of spikes. So everything went smoothly. Uh, <laughs> Your fingers. What about you, Ning? Well, I'm really relieved that uh, everything was uh, successfully executed out and uh, everyone was really great. You know, Singaporeans, they say Singaporeans are boring, but no, so many people came down to witness this event and uh, it's really awesome that, you know, STB and Central believed in us and uh, we were able to do this. And I think also bringing magic, uh, extreme acts to local shores with homegrown talent, with, of course, uh, sexiest oh, yeah. woman in magic. Uh, I think it's a great mix and a great day right here at Central. Okay, so how did you manage to get this idea for the inversion stunt? Well, we're looking for a publicity event for our main event, which is the Impossible Record, uh, 15 Illusions in 5 Minutes. So we didn't want to do something that was magic-centric, we wanted something different, so we thought of an escape act. Now Ning did a mega escape. That's right. Now, last year I did a mega escape that uh, Razor TV actually came by to cover as well. Now, that's called the Impalement Cage, and that's for me having 90 seconds to free myself from a bit of spikes. Now, all surrounded, it was like what you see is what you get. So, there wasn't any, like, you know, silhouettes or covers and stuff. Nothing magic about it. It's just pure escape, like today. And today's stun is kind of like Harry Houdini meets the Pussycat Dolls. That's right. So we wanted to take it up a notch and that's when we decided to forego the safety line. Now most escape artists and magicians worldwide will always use a safety line whether it's covertly or openly. Okay, but we didn't. We decided not to do it. And then at the last minute, which is yesterday at 1am, we decided to include this bed of steel spikes. How do you bear to let this pretty woman beside you be, you know, without any safety line? I think we trust ourselves as a team. Well, I'm the one designing this stuff. As I said, 50-50, I get to strap her up. She does the skip. So it's a, it's an equal partnership. Really? Okay, so how did you prep for this whole, you know, stunt? Uh, I watched her. <laughs> no, well, there's a lot of training together because uh, there are really two parts to it. One is the designing of the harness and the rigging. Now, simultaneously, when we were doing that and fine-tuning that to make sure it's secure, Ning was really just uh, practicing being inverted at a low level, but get used to being uh, upside down for extended periods of time. Because if you've ever been upside down, you know what happens. Well, yeah, basically, the blood rushes to your head and uh, you have this intense pressure on your temples and your skull kind of feels like it's pulsating when you're upside down. So, um, you know, I had this pressure on my eyeballs and um, after a while, you kind of get giddy. Your ears start to feel funny uh, and basically not a very journey good feeling at all. Uh, so, well, yoga helped because, you know, it kind of strengthens your core muscles as well. So we, we did hit the gym a lot. I mean, he was like, you know, always asking me, have you gone to the gym? <laughs> have you gone to the gym? <laughs> And the training was progressive. Uh, we had her upside down and she wasn't even escaping yet. Then we had an escape. Uh, I tried everything myself as well just to make sure it can be done. Seriously? You tried it? Yes, well. Uh, I was the first one to be inverted by the scissors lift uh, when we did it yesterday. Thank you. Yeah, but for, like, not all the way. We like the chemistry going around <laughs> here. But just to make sure that uh, it, it, the rigging worked, okay? Uh, and uh, it did, so we're very happy with that. I mean, I think no one should try this at home, by the way, okay? Don't do this so at home. we are trained professionals and we did have a team behind us to do the fabrication uh, and we oversee that. So please don't, even if you could get someone to sponsor you a venue, sponsor you a lift, to go two stories up and a bed of spikes and a straight jacket, please don't do this. Okay, so what are some of the do's and don'ts during the day of the show? Well, I think do's and don'ts uh, don't die. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> for the show, like what were you doing to? You I know? think we just ensured the setup. Uh, we didn't do anything strenuous during the day. I mean, it was all about rest and being just mentally focused. Uh, Ning was preparing mentally the whole day. Uh, the crew was just making sure that the setup was all tightened. We did triple checks just to make sure everything was tight. Don't eat too much. <laughs> That's a weight, huh? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and you don't want to. The... Yes. Uh, the Malayan, you know. <laughs> no one would do it without a safety line. In fact, we had criticism worldwide for not using a safety line by other magicians. You mean that's like a code of practice or something? It, it could, you could say that's an unwritten rule, but some people felt it was irresponsible for not using a safety line. But to us, we're pushing the limit and we're not reckless. It is calculated risk and we do plan. I think 
it's all about being well, daring to be different and pushing the bar and not being afraid to, you know, like you know, people can tell you that it's never been done before or like no one has done it, but you can be the first. You can.